Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So today we're gonna be making this cool little thing and I don't know if you can see it, but the firefly has a light, so the little butt part <laughs> lights up and it's a shaker. So I think you can hear that. Um, there is a tutorial, a um, not a design space, sorry. There is a tutorial on how to assemble it so you get a better view of it. And also on Instagram, if you follow me, um, it's the useless crafter, no spaces. Um, you get to see the close up of this. So I'm super excited because it's the first time that I've used a light. Um, so yeah, just everything, right? Um, I wanted to incorporate the lights where it was, where it would be more natural to have a light. So it's not just like, hey, here's a cake topper and here are random lights blinking. Um, I really wanted to try to make it seem like, oh, duh, like the firefly, it should have a light. So mm -hmm. anyway, that's just, you know, what we're going to do today. Hopefully um, you guys will like it as much as I do. So here is the finished product, okay? So most of the images like Tiana, the fire, actually, no, I'm sorry, Tiana and the frog and the lily pad. Um, no, actually, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm taking this all back. Tiana and the frog is from an SVG file that I bought off of Etsy. So I will definitely list the, um, the designer that I use. But everything else is sort of like um, from either design space or the cake topper slider that um, we sell on Creative Fabrica for a dollar. So it's up to you if you want to try to get that for a dollar. You can use it all the time. You could use it and then sell it, you know, as part of your cake topper. All right. So let's start on how to create something like this. So the first thing is I'm going to go to upload because I have all my stuff in here. OK, so I'm going to click view all. Um, I, I know I'm doing this one next with the lanterns that are going to be lit up. So I'm super excited about that. OK, so here's Tiana. This is the print and cut. Here's the frog. And then um, I want my cake topper slider. Did I already pass it here? And then I also want, I used, which font did I use? Um, Okay, I won't do the font. We'll just insert the images for now, okay? And then we'll talk about how I did the um, the name and stuff. So these are pretty big right now. So just go ahead and make it smaller just so that we can kind of work our way through this. Um, the next thing is, this is the template that um, I'm selling for a dollar. <laughs> so it's I used the slider on this one originally because I wasn't sure if I was going to have the um, the little firefly also move or just be lit up. So I wanted that option. So when you first get this SVG in, just go to ungroup and you're basically going to get rid of all the words. The words are just so that you have, you have context um, to how to use it. But so just delete all the words and I'll talk you through it right now. So this is our foam. So with the foam, I would ungroup it. I We had two copies because if you want to put really thick items in this shaker part, you're going to need to double up on your foam. If you only want sequins and glitter, which is what I did, um, and I can show you right now, then the one foam is enough. But if you're only using one foam, this is what I like to do as well. I want to make the foam a little bit thicker. So I made some alterations. Just make the second circle a little bit smaller. And oh, shoot. Can you see? Yeah, I think you can see. Okay. Grab the two of them. Go to align and center and then weld it. So what happens is you have a thicker foam area and it's just easier to work with. And then over here, because we made it thicker, just make it a little bit wider. As long as it fits well in this circle, then every all the temp the template will work fine. So on this one, what we need to do is we had this piece. Let's ungroup this. We don't need this top piece. Okay, so we need this piece. We need the foam, and then here's the acetate paper. We made it this gray because it 
that's as clear as we want it to be. Hopefully that's a good visual. You're gonna duplicate it. And, and um, for this topper, it's see-through. So it's, you all you see is the sequins, and I knew I wanted to do a lot of green and purple, and so I felt like it was gonna be very vibrant. So I just opted for a see-through. So with see-through, you're gonna have a back layer of your acetate, you're gonna have a top layer of your foam, and then you, you're gonna throw in all your sequins in here, right? And then you're gonna put the top layer of acetate on top. Then you're gonna hide all of that by putting this on top. Um, and then this guy is our gold layer. And then we need that final purple layer, which we're gonna bring in right now. That's part of images. Type in doily and search, and it's this one. I love this one. Um, let's insert it. It's got a lot going on. We're actually only using one layer of this whole thing, but I like having like a different shape than just a plain circle. This one gives you like, it's a little uneven. It's got, you know, little, little cutouts. So let's ungroup this guy. We don't need the top layer. We don't need this one. We want this layer, so the pink one we don't need. So this is the layer that I like. Now, this is our whole shaker portion, okay? Go ahead and just align center just so that it doesn't bother you, and then group it. This will always move as one unit because we're done with this, okay? So we're gonna put it in here, we're gonna make it big. Everything's gonna be proportionate to this whole doily, okay? And in the end, then we'll look at the measurements. It really doesn't matter right now. As long as everything's proportionate to this, then at the end we'll make it bigger or smaller, but they all go together and we know it's gonna be proportionate because our original design is proportionate to this, okay? So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see better. Okay, so here's Tiana, she's print and cut, right? So here's the trick that I like to do. And actually this one, let's just move over to the side for a second. With print and cut, what I like to do is bring in a shape, um, a square, and unlock it. We wanna make sure that the square completely covers Tiana, okay? All right, then grab these two items and we're gonna slice. And the reason why we're doing this is because, at least for my printer, I can't print cardstock that well, so I always print it out on regular copy paper. And so it's really thin, and that's not a big deal like when it prints and when it cuts, but when you put it on the cake topper, you want something a little bit more sturdy than just printer paper. So I always do a back layer in cardstock, and I always choose the color either to be white or black. And in this case, I'm gonna do black because if you can see around her dress and her glove, there is a black outline. So what's nice about the black then is if you don't line it up exactly, which I have a problem with lining up images, it's just so hard to tape it down perfectly, even though it seems like it should be easy, <laughs> but it's not. So um, I always pick the same outline. So in this one, I'm gonna do black. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna grab the two of them and go to align, center it, and we're gonna group it. Because now, whatever size we're gonna make the print and cut, then the back layer is gonna be the same size. So, that is on here. And she's about like that. So I'm gonna go off of this. Now, let's go to images and let's bring in the lily pad. So hopefully I can find it right away. Where is our lily pad? Um, are you kidding me? Where is it? Okay, maybe I typed in pad. Interesting, okay, hold on. Let's exit out of this. Let's see if I can find my lily pad over here. Oh, I just typed in lily, okay. So let's go to images and type in Lily. Um, okay. There it is. So one L. <laughs> All right, so let's um, insert that one. 
and I love this. I, I love all the layers. Now what I did though was, do you see how this bottom dark olive green layer is only this? The way I stacked it though is I actually gave it more of an outline. So you have the option, once you layer it, how you put it together. So this one is gonna go over here and I really layered it. And what I mean by that is I kept all the layers and then for each piece, I put, I put a glue dot behind it. So I used my glue gun, I did a little dot and then I let it dry. So I didn't use it as glue. I used it to dry so that it had some uh, dimension to it. And so everything stacked up on it. So I think in the end, my lily pad was probably like half an inch tall. And so it just gave it the layers that we really needed to make this just super beautiful. All right, um, so here's our lily pad. Here's our cute little frog. And this frog I did in cardstock and I loved it. He was super easy to do, um, arrange, send to the front. Cause I like to, um, do different cardstock colors, different textures, and the same thing where I like using cardstock figures and then a print and cut. I don't want everything to be print and cut because I feel like it looks kind of dull, but print and cut gives you all the details that there's no way I'm gonna layer this dress like this and all the leaves and all that stuff. So this gives me the option of using her even though she has so much detail. Um, but she's the only piece that's print and cut. Everything else is gonna be like a shimmery gold or glitter or plain, but it gives you that whole thing. And then you have your sequins too, so it's really, really nice. Okay, so here's our frog. Here's this guy, the firefly. Okay, so let's go to images. And I did this one. Oh, the firefly was a print and cut as well. I forgot about that. So here's this one, but I felt like I didn't like the little arms and legs and I didn't like the antenna. I thought this was a cuter version of a firefly. So I took in both and what I ended up doing, which I really liked how it turned out, is um, this was going to be my background. So I did this in a purple glitter cardstock. And I lined it up with this guy to make sure that sizing wise, it kind of matched up, okay? And then what I did was I cut off this with scissors. So I left the print and cut as is, but I cut off the arms, the antenna, and I put him on top like this. Okay, so let's change this to light purple. Um, and then our print and cut. And then what I did was this. I grabbed a circle because this is where our light is going to be, right? So um, unlock it and kind of make it more oval for it to fit in this tail, okay? And I used really thick purple glitter cardstock. Okay, so I'm cutting out a hole right here so that the light goes directly in here and shines through on my thin paper. So it really looks like the bottom half of his body is a firefly lighting up. It looks amazing in person. So this, let's just grab the two items. And remember when you're slicing, you can only slice two things. So one is my oval, two is my firefly. I'm gonna slice it out and I don't, I no longer need this, right? So this is gonna, <clears throat> go ahead and send it to the front. So it's gonna sit like this. And it looks like the purple's a little bit too big. Okay, there we go. And it really doesn't matter. No one's noticing, like it almost looks like the purple is an outline. So I think it looks great the way we have it. You just wanna make sure that hole is there so that the light shines through to the paper. Okay, so let's group this guy. And that way it's gonna be um, bigger and smaller at the same rate. And this goes, I ended up having him go over here, turn this way, maybe a little bit smaller. Okay, the banner. So let's, uh, let's get rid of this. 
and let's go to images. I use this banner a lot. I love it because it's two layers. It is this one. <clears throat> and what I like about it is when you first get it, make a duplicate copy. And on this one, go to contour, hit hide all. This gives you a solid background, okay? And in this one, I made it white, white glitter cardstock. And this one's gonna sit on top and it's just cut out, it's one whole piece. It lays right on top of this white, so it ends up being very secure and gives just the right balance of being delicate because of the thin lines, but not too thin because it cuts well, even on glitter cardstock. Um, go ahead and arrange and send to the front just so that we have it looking the way it should, okay? Now, and then let's center this one, align center, and then group it so that it always moves together. And I ended up unlocking it and making it a little bit longer and thicker so that the name fits in here well. Let's just say it's like that, okay. So I had it kind of tilted this Firefly, I'm gonna arrange, send to the front. It was more sitting like right here. And then I didn't need to make any alterations on design space because I wasn't sure where he was gonna go for sure. So what I ended up doing, and you should definitely look at the YouTube video for this, but I basically took a hole punch and punched out just enough to put the light right here and then put him on top. You couldn't see the light at all and just looked like he was lit up <laughs> okay so now we have all the pieces except for the name and the number and the reason why i say except for that is because i went into this um i went into inkscape to create the offset and i just realized um i'm not going to do that in this video tutorial i have another one that just does it i will link it to that one i usually do it together but i'm on a new computer and i don't have inkscape on this so i completely apologize for that um but so this is the piece let's say done right you can still make adjustments to it now like if this lily pad's too big for you make it a little bit smaller okay now I know from experience that I'm going to be using a really thick cardstock. It's the shimmer paper from Cricut. And so my back layer is going to be strong enough to hold everything and it for not to be flimsy. But you can always, if you don't like, if you don't have super sturdy paper, you can always make two copies or the last one of the ones I did, or oh, the Mario Brothers one. Um, I did three layers of it because the middle was completely empty because I was having the coins spin on a, on a uh, piece of thread. So the middle was out, so it didn't have that full support of top, bottom, and middle, or top, middle, and bottom. Um, so that's why it needed three layers. In this case, I only needed one, but if you needed another one, do two. So let's line this up so that it matches the same colors. So I knew my top, my top circle, and you can do it over here. My top circle was a um, shimmery, it's sort of like pinkish purple glitter cardstock. My second layer, oops, let's go back up here. Let's do the panel because it's easier to find it here. My, um, this layer was gold. And then my back layer, is a dark purple shimmer paper and then i did um the lily pad i changed the lily pad so this is how you can do the colors okay you can either go over here and select each item and change the color so like this is the big pink leaves i ended up making them white because i was shifting between glitter cardstock and light and dark so you can do it over here and I'm gonna, right now, I'm just gonna delete this, okay? So that we only have our new project over here. So I'm gonna move it over here, make it a little bit bigger so you could see it really, really well. You can go over to your right-hand side panel and click color sync, and you can move things here. So like, let's say um, 
I ended up doing the frog in green. I didn't like this color. So I ended up doing a light green and then I did his whole body a dark green. So let's say I matched it up with this one. So you can see how I'm pulling things and just dropping in the colors. You can do that here or you can click on layers and do each layer and change the colors, okay? So that's matching up more. My spots on him, I actually use orange glitter cardstock and it looks so good. So I'm gonna change it to this color. So you can hit this one and let's say the next three, hit your shift key and then click on the next one and the next one and you can change it all at one time. So here's my orange. Um, that's pretty much it. What I'm gonna show you now though is how to make it on the Make It screen. So let's go to Make It. And, oh, this is too big. That's why it's showing her separately on two pages, her and the Firefly. So when you get to here and you click Continue, just print it and then you'll take it to the Cricut and it'll cut around it. The, this black rectangle, what happens is when you put, put it on the mat, and it's telling you how to put it on the mat. Put her face up here, put it to this corner, don't move it over here, or don't flip it you know, sideways or whatever. It needs to be this way. Your Cricut will read the registration marks and will then cut all around her. Leave the bleed on, and it's gonna cut in, and it's gonna be beautiful, okay? All right, here's your acetate. Here is your white glitter cardstock. Here is the black cardstock that's going to keep Tiana super sturdy. Here's the black of the frog, which actually we can make it the same color. So you know what? Click up. So did you see how I can? First of all, you can move the frog anywhere on the mat, but you can click on the three dots and go to move object, and we're going to move it with Tiana. So now you can cut these two, or you can do something like this, or you can even make it like this and move her over, however efficient you want to be, okay? Um, here's the orange spots, um, the lily pad. The lily pad's going to be in all different colors. Here's your foam. Your foam, so I have a maker. I choose flex foam, and it's going to tell you to put in your rotary bait blade and it cuts like butter. It's perfection, even though my foam is pretty thin. Okay, here's this piece. So this piece, it's moving together. I'm going to hit back in a second and show you how to ungroup it so that you don't have to waste your paper. When we, un, um, when we slice this out into two pieces, two separate pieces, you can move this second piece closer and you won't waste so much um, paper. This one we can move in closer. Here's this. So, you know, this banner we're only cutting, we only want the edges. So look, you could do something like this and stick all your frog pieces in the middle. So you could save space like that. Oops, there we go. And then this guy, you can do something like this. So you could save more space than it was before. Okay, here's our purple doily, our firefly, our lily pad, and that's it. Okay, so let's go back and let me show you how to ungroup this one and the other one. Okay, I forgot to do that. So let's hit cancel. So on our lily pad, let's bring it over here. Let's ungroup it. Okay, so this is pretty efficient, but if you wanted to separate these, you can do this. We're gonna use contour, okay? So it's in three separate pieces. When you use contour to separate it, then you need the number of copies it has to match the number of pieces that you want. So this is three, let's duplicate. Here's our second one and our third one, okay? So here we go. So the first one, click on contour. And you can either use this panel or you can actually click on it. But I like to hit hide all, it's gonna leave the top one, okay? And then X out of it, and there's our top one all by itself. Go to the second one, contour, and you can 
deselect this one and deselect this one and that leaves you the outer piece and then we want the left piece right so let's go to contour and you can just deselect from here and now it's going to leave you that left piece and so now when you go to cut it you can move all three pieces let's say you know your scrap piece is really random and it needs to be like this to cut now you can do it you couldn't do it before because it was all you know one image um, all right, so same thing with this guy. This guy, because he's so separated, you could also slice. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. You just wanna make sure when you're slicing, whatever shape you bring in covers one whole piece and just that piece. Then we're gonna grab these two and we're gonna slice. And so now you have two separated pieces. And I think there's one more. I'm gonna show you one more thing, okay? So I'm gonna leave this kind of in a lot of traffic okay um it's probably not a good example but that's okay i'm going to bring in a circle so that i can get this piece out so what i was saying before is make sure that the one piece is completely covered um, by the other shape that you're going to slice it out okay so this is in a lot of traffic my circle is sitting on top of a white piece as well as a pink piece this green is on my pink piece but look at my cursor, okay? My cursor is gonna grab just, oh, sorry, that was not a good example. My cursor is gonna grab just the pink and my circle. That is enough for me to slice. I'm gonna let go of my mouse and look, it picked up the two items. It picked up the pink and the circle. You can see that here and then you can go to slice. And there you go. And get rid of this and now you have this piece all by itself and you see how it was just sitting in traffic it's totally okay for you to have that you just need to make sure that your mouse is only picking up two pieces um all right then you can separate out this i'll show you what the make it screen looks like now um let's go down to where we had those pieces um was it here this was one of them so see now these two were still connected because we didn't remove it but this piece is you know, you could do something like this. And then the other piece was the white. And so see, now this gives you the option of, you know, like, do we need to move one here, move one up here? I don't think I can get that in there, but something like that, let's say. Yeah, this one's stuck. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Um, catch the one that puts everything together. You're gonna love it. The shaker is beautiful and I love how the lights are incorporated. Um, everything is on my Amazon shop. So it's amazon.com slash shop slash the useless crafter. I have everything by project. So you can see all the materials that I use that I buy on Amazon. There are things that are not on there like Cricut glitter cardstock because then you can go on the Cricut website when I tell you to when it's super on sale and then stock up on your glitter cardstock. All right. Um, okay. So thank you. Please post your comments. Give me feedback. If you have questions, I'm pretty good at answering them, I think. Um, and if you have a special request, just let me know. I would love to do your project for you. I will create the tutorial. Everyone else, I mean, for everyone else, it's just a tutorial that they didn't ask for, just like everyone that every other one that I do. Um, and this helps you learn exactly how to make your name the size that you want. And so you really learn. And it's I'm not enabling you because you still need to recreate this in design space. So I think it's a great that hindrance of design space not being able to share the projects and you can just open and use mine is um, annoying a lot of times but in this case it's a great way to learn so let me know if you need help with your project i'm totally here to help and create that tutorial for you all right thanks guys bye